Zabel, and this is... I'm Nick. Welcome to the Village Christian Church. It's good to be with you guys. Yeah, this is great. So glad you're here with us. I mean, we do this because we want to connect with you. We're here about it just for you. And we'd love to know who's on the other side of the screen. Who's out there? Connect with us. Um, there's a number up on your screen. Text us, text us. There's actually a live person on the other side, actually here in the room in the studio with yep. us. And uh, let us know what's going on in your life. Yeah. Because that's what this is all about. It's about doing life together. Yeah, and even if you're not watching this on a Sunday, you can you can text that word connect and we'll still receive it through the week. Yeah. We want you getting plugged in here. Yeah, because there's more than just Sunday, right? Yes, absolutely. I mean, doing real life together, that's, yep. that's what it's all about. So, real life. Yeah. Talk to me. Your daily routine. How many hours do you think you sleep in a day? Um, I've gotten better about sleep, uh, more disciplined with it. Okay. So, trying to hit a bedtime. Um, I shoot for like seven to seven and a half hours. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty good. So then there's 24 hours in a day, seven hours. So yep. you still have a remaining yeah, uh, 16, and, 16 half, and a half, 17. and a half or so, 17. So that's a lot of hours in a day to do stuff with, it right? Is. Yep. Yep. How do you think, I mean, are you a morning person, night person? So like, how does that tilt? Well, I don't know. Um, I can get up in the morning. I'm a farm kid, so I can wake up sure. and I can get going. Uh, but I prefer nights. Like, I have way more fun at nights. The mornings are packed with getting the girls ready, uh, getting them out the door. Lauren leaves before they have to leave, so I do all the drop-offs, and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there's like two hours of a work day with them before I get to my work sure. day. Sure, yeah, oh, I, you know? I totally get that. Yep. So when is your time that you just spend, do you take out of that 17, 16 half hours that you spend some time just alone and devotional or anything like that? Um, at work, so like okay, so you do usually that like, that. I, like I have the I have an unnatural advantage probably to a lot of people. Sure. That like I work yeah. at a church, so time alone with God does count, you okay. know. And it's not. Uh, it's usually like get a coffee, go sit, get alone with God mid morning somewhere like that, like okay. 10, 11 o'clock after I get a few things going, um, get some reading in, or right when I first wake up before I get out of bed, I'll start in prayer. Yeah. So that's one of yeah. my just habits. There. So for those that are not in ministry, like right. myself, yeah. um, I work and have three kids and a husband yep. and two dogs and blah, blah, blah. Right. Yep. So doing real life. Um, I was thinking about, I'm a morning person. Uh -huh. I find peace in the morning before the kids sure. wake up before we, my husband's a night owl. Uh -huh. So he sleeps in a little later. So that's my peaceful time. I get my coffee. Yep. I get, I do my devotional time. You know, sometimes it's five minutes to be really realistic. Sometimes yeah. it's a half an hour. Just right. depends on how my morning's rolling. But that was not always the case. Yeah. Like it took a long time to get to that routine and stuff. Sure. So I was thinking about as we we're preparing for today, how does the majority of most Americans spend their day? Right. Right. Because not, I know in a realistic sense, not everybody has gotten to that point where they either get five minutes or half an hour right. or they're in ministry. Yep. So I, pulled up a little survey. You ready? Yeah. So it's 2022. I know two years ago, however, still not too far away. Right. Um, USA Today, obviously a liberal choice, but uh -huh. still survey. Um, other than sleep, the only thing Americans did more than work was what? It'd have to be some sort of media, like play on their phone or... Mm -hmm. Leisure in sports. And the most popular leisure activity was watching television yeah and then how many hours do you think that is oh uh so out of that like 17 hours how many do you think that is well i mean it would have to be a few hours a day i bet people sit three there. hours on average yeah just zoning yep. out and then other after that was computer games 34 minutes oh see that one i didn't know anybody played computer games anymore have you met carter yeah. doesn't carter ferguson uh, would that include like video games yeah 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 i guess yeah, so yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like video games. Okay, here's um, traveling to a destination, 22 minutes. Sports and exercise, only 20 minutes. Yep. Uh, reading, 16 minutes. Eating, drinking, like sustaining your body, 1.2 hours. Okay. Okay. And then what do you think socializing, communicating with others? Oh, well, it's probably on a decline over the last Absolutely. 20 years. 34 minutes. Yeah. So I was thinking about this. My day, you know, how does it all work? How do we put it together. The survey is so disturbing. So you're telling me three hours a day, average American zones out, doesn't talk to anybody. And out of that 17, 16 and a half hours, only 34 minutes are so 
communicating with someone else. I know. Like outside of work. Does that seem disturbing? Yeah, and even that, sometimes it's limited not, to not in person. Like, so I heard another survey this week of people who are, are detached uh, from person to person yeah. interaction. Yeah, and the two, thing, three days a week. coming back to what we're gonna talk about today, nowhere in that survey, I know a liberal source, but nowhere in that story does it say anything about spirituality, much right. less Christianity, but spirituality at all. Right. Which is disturbing because there's a lot of room yeah. for improvement. Yeah. If you if you want to know God, if you want to have a relationship with God, what do you what time? Are you How do you get with there? Him? Yeah. Right. One so, of the things that we've adopted in that crazy schedule is so I don't know about you. Our our my phone will connect to my Bluetooth in my truck. Yep. Yep. And so I hand it off to one of the girls. We do. Uh, the U version verse of mm-hmm. the day, and now they have a devotional that goes mm-hmm. with it. Mm-hmm. It's and, cool. And then they can they have a reading that goes with it. And then we pray, and I mean we've got just enough time to fit that all in. Yeah. Pray them out the door before they run into school. Yeah. So before we hit what you're going to talk about today, something yeah. just top of my mind. You know, not everybody is like reading. Some people are want to be visual. Some yep. people want to talk it through. But it's that point of that being and spending that time, however it hits you the best. Right. Morning, night. However it is, yep. like you said, car, sitting with your coffee, whatever it is. But talk to me about what you're going to talk about today and what we're going into the next five weeks of. Yeah, so we're starting this thing called Red Letter Challenge. There's still time for you to join. If you were to jump in today, you could be a part of day six on the devotional um, and, and we could get you a book. You could order this on Amazon. If you get it here, we save you about $9. Um, we also have a group that you can join. We've got lots of life groups starting. But the benefit of this, especially week one, is something changes about us when we've been with Jesus, Mm -hmm. when we spend time with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Even like, uh, if I look at my own life, our our mornings are more intense until I put worship music on. Absolutely, yep. And and slow it down. It Mm -hmm. changes my disposition, it changes the girls. um, And we want that as an everyday walk. So this is just a challenge, looking at the words of Jesus and and being challenged to live them out every day. So I know you're gonna talk in Luke, or not Luke, Acts today? Acts chapter four, yeah, we're looking at the story of Peter. Okay, and so Peter, for those that don't know it, um, was he a disciple? Yeah, so Peter was a disciple. Uh, If you are familiar with his name, you might think we're talking starring role of the New Testament, Mm -hmm. you know, like leader of the first church. But he wasn't always that qualified. Right. You well, know? I don't think any of us are really that qualified. Right. Yep. Talk That's about real life every day. We're not all that qualified. But Peter was with God before, yep. with Jesus, before he died on the cross and rose again. Yep. It was a game right? changer. Yep. So going back to what I started talking about our day and being with Jesus, I mean, I think that's where it changes it all. And you're going to talk about that, yeah. how it did it for Peter and others, yes. right? Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, if we put just some simple principles in place, very authoritative people saw something commendable in Peter that probably kept him alive for a little bit longer. You yeah. know, I mean, there was something to what he was doing that that was just respectable. So Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not an easy thing to implement in your mm-hmm. 17 hours a day. I know it right. seems so easy and little number, but I can't wait to hear about how that yeah. changes your life, even if it's five minutes right. in your day. Yep. So stay tuned. We're going to hit into the sanctuary here and listen to Nick's word. And then we'll come back here, do communion and pray out for the week. Thanks for being with us, guys. Good to see you. With all of your voices, all of our voices, just praising him. And this next song really references some scriptures in Revelation where it's talking about all of these voices in heaven giving him a hallelujah a praise he is so worthy you guys and so whether your heart is ready to say those words without abandon or you're just trying it out lean in give him the hallelujahs that he is worthy of give him the praise that he is worthy of because this is the god who gave his son that we just celebrated last week to create a life for each of us that we get to live in this hope that we get to live in this freedom and so let's let's hear what heaven sounds like as we worship him today let's join with all creation in that Yeah. 
God, that is our prayer this morning. You are so worthy of our praise, and we just want to be in your presence, Lord. We want to praise you with all that you have given us. And so we do that today. We just offer our best. It is in your name we pray. Amen. You can have a seat. Hey, good morning, everyone. My name's Nick. I'm one of the teaching pastors. Welcome to the Village Christian Church. We are so excited today to be kicking off our Red Letter Challenge. Uh, for the specifics on what this challenge is all about, go ahead and check this video out from Nate. Hey, church family. Today is the day that we start the Red Letter Challenge. For the next 35 days, reading the red letters of the Bible, which are Jesus' words, and then putting them into practice. We are so, so, so excited. Today, we begin, and we're going to be on day six, days one through five. We're kind of pre-starting officially today, so you can run home and read those first five things if you'd like. It's just an overview, and then today it officially starts day six. We're jumping in on the topic of being. You need a book. If you do not yet have a book, we made a massive order. We should have enough books at every single campus. The cost is very cheap, $10. Actually, 19 churches subsidized in the nine. You cover the 10 and we're all set. These, this particular book that I'm holding in my hand is for high school and above. If you have fourth grade through eighth grade, there's books specifically designed for them, also $10 you can grab a book. There's probably one in your chair close to you or there's a red uh, table somewhere in your campus. Go and find that area, make sure you grab your book. There's also an envelope in that for uh, to help with that, to pay. So $10, just drop a $10 bill or a check, or you can use the Venmo. If you've got a book in the last couple of weeks and you haven't paid yet, go ahead and do that if you could for us so that we can really get this uh, moving forward. So individually, you start today, day six, even you can watch online, we're gonna have devotionals, 30 second devotionals. The first one drops tonight, Nick is gonna be doing that. We have different campus pastors doing that all throughout the experience. It's going to be awesome. So individually, you're checking out the book, you're reading the words of Jesus each day, you're putting into practice. Community-wise, we wanna encourage you to be a part of a group. We have all kinds of new groups that are forming just for this red letter challenge. Five weeks, that's it. Just set aside an hour a week for five weeks. Be in community with other people. What are we learning? How are we put it into practice? How can we learn from each other and grow together? In our Manuka campus, we've got new groups Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. In the Seneca and Cole City campus, we have new groups you can talk to your campus pastor about that. And online, we have a new online group that's forming. So no matter where you're at, you can be a part of a group experience that's gonna start this week, so make sure you sign up. We're so excited to see what God's going to do in your life. You individually, 35 days, reading the red letters of Jesus' words, applying it, putting it into action. Imagine what's going to happen when a thousand of us do this all together. What an impact it's going to make in our neighborhood, our family, our community. We're passionate about three things around here, life change, life growth, and life purpose. And life change only happens with Jesus. And so we want you to spend time with them. We want you to grow in a community. And so we're asking that you take us up in this challenge. You can scan this QR code. You could get out of your comfort zone and be part of a group for the next five weeks. It's, it's that simple. Five gatherings. Be here every week. We're going to look at the words of Jesus, and we're going to live them out. And, and we just want to invite you to be a part of it. It's your generosity that makes this mission possible, that, that gives us the opportunity to keep pushing God's kingdom out into the communities around us. We just want to see more people come to know Jesus through a life changed by him. And so when you're generous, we can afford to do things like the Red Letter Challenge, and, and we can afford to start other campuses. Regardless, we're just so excited for your partnership. Um, if you've never given before anywhere, uh, and you want to be generous somewhere this week, would you consider being generous to the mission here at the Village Christian Church? Uh, would you consider being a rookie giver? We call it a, a rookie giver when it's your first time that you've ever given. Maybe it's part of your budget, and that's a, that's a regular giver, somebody that you've, you're part of the mission here. You want to support it weekly or monthly. Relational is when we get to that 10% level, and I think that there's something special in our hearts that happens with God um, at that level. And as always, we're always shocked at, at radical gifts. Maybe you've been blessed above and beyond what you thought would be possible, uh, and, and you want to give out of that abundance. We, we couldn't be thankful 
enough. We couldn't express our gratitude enough for your generosity. There's three ways that you can give. The first one is online, thevillagechristianchurch.com. There's a give link in the corner. It's secure. It's safe. The other one is the Give app, G-Y-V-E. If you're most comfortable just giving in person, cash or check, there's these boxes in between the doors in the back. You could just drop there. Uh, Again, regardless of how you give or what what you give, we sure are grateful for it because we're going to keep using those funds to advance God's kingdom and to do that in the most ethical and responsible way that we can. And we love your partnership. We've got a lot to be excited about today. Starting the Red Letter Challenge. Uh, Go ahead and get your hearts and minds ready. If you want to cheat and get ahead in your Bible, we're in Acts 4 today. We live in an interactive world where new social media challenges pop up all the time. Some for enjoyment, some for a good cause, others are just plain dangerous. What if you tried a new challenge? One that could transform your life, community, and the world. What if you spent 40 days studying Jesus' words and applying his teachings to everyday life? All focused on five principles. Being, forgiving, serving, giving, and going like Christ. So what are you waiting for? Let's join together and take the Red Letter Challenge. In case you didn't catch it, my name's Nick. I'd love the chance to meet you afterwards. And we are excited, contrary to the weather and and kind of that that mood that a rainy Sunday morning starts in us, we are excited for the Red Letter Challenge. So we're going to wake up and and be looking forward to what we're talking about today. Back when I was in third grade, this is a movie that I'd be shocked if anybody has seen. Uh, My third grade teacher near retirement wanted us to watch this movie. It was called The Ugly Dachshund. Anybody ever seen this? This is like a 1965 movie that was, I think they call it digitally remastered so that they could color the film so that you could watch it in color. But when it was released, it was a a black and white film. It was about this newlywed couple. They were in love somehow. Now, let me back up. I've done zero research since the third grade on this movie. So this is only memory of of 30 years ago. So if you've recently seen this movie and you know the details better, correct me online or somewhere else. What I remember, these newlyweds ended up with a litter of dachshund puppies. But one of those puppies, somehow that had gotten in the mix in this adoption, was an ugly dachshund. It didn't belong and it was a Great Dane. And so it wasn't very long into their lives before this Great Dane uh, started acting big, you know, and it caused all this havoc and chaos in their life. It would run stuff over in their house and, and the wife was furious. She wanted rid of this dog, but the husband kind of had a, a tender heart towards this ugly dachshund. They put it in a dog show and he couldn't compete because he would crawl around on his belly like a wiener dog. Okay, he would kind of do all these things like he was a little dog, but deep down everybody could tell like he was a a big dog. It, It didn't belong. You see, we're all familiar with a principle like this, that you will start to rub off on people around you and that the people around you rub off on you. You know that you've picked up expressions, you've picked up dialect, you've moved. If you've ever lived in a different part of the United States, you've you've sounded different based on where you live. There's even phrasing that we use different because we kind of adopt our surroundings. This is also why we get this principle that a lot of us were raised with of, of, I don't know what you're thinking about hanging out with that group of friends. Do you remember that? Remember when your mom, you'd you'd kind of caution, you might leave out an important detail who you were going to spend time with that night because it's biblical. It says it right in 1 Corinthians, bad company corrupts good character. I mean, it's right there. It's a principle that we could live by, that your surroundings have an influence on you. You've even caught yourself starting to kind of step out of your comfort zone based on who you've been around. Uh, This is why in Proverbs it says, he who walks with the wise grows wise. Like this is a biblical principle. And while it's true, while we know it to be a biblical principle, we can accidentally corrupt it. Now track with me on this. This is where Christianity can become more about behavior modification. You ever heard us use that phrase around here? Behavior modification, that when you get around other Christians and when you get to a church, you start to attend, you try to start to act or look like the people of that church. And it becomes more about looking apart than something actually transforming inside of you. And so when we get here, we, we change our posture we maybe at least move our mouth to look like we're singing. 
You know, we might clean up our language. We, we certainly are, are smiling and, and nodding and, and shaking hands on the way in. But what if there was something deeper? In Christianity, it was more than the do's and don'ts. There's a, a greater principle at play here. And it's really simply this, that our being with Jesus is more important than our not being anywhere else. I want you to catch this today. I think this is monumental for your understanding about the Christian faith, that our being with Jesus is more important than our not being anywhere else. This is why the prophet Jeremiah said it like this. He said, blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They'll be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes, it le- its leaves are always green. It has no worries in the year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. You see, we're starting week one of the Red Letter Challenge this week. And week one is all about being with Jesus. There's a, a difference between just uh, behavior modification and actually walking in relationship with God. And so all week long, it's about principles that we could live this out so that that we would not worry in seasons of drought. You see, behavior modification works when times are good. Behavior modification works when you you show up on time and everything's in order and it's, it's a sunny day. It's not a rainy day. But when you show up and life is going a little bit sideways, behavior modification doesn't sustain you. Your simple effort in being a a good person doesn't sustain you because there's a better principle at play. And it's that our being with Jesus is more important than our not being anywhere else. And week one is all about being with Jesus. I can't stress you enough how simple these changes would make. And if we want to be a people who bear fruit, if we want to be a people of God, we got to live some of this discipline out of, of walking with Jesus. When I talk about the Apostle Peter, that's who we're looking at today. We're, we're looking at this story in Acts chapter 4 about Peter. I wonder what your first thought is. See, if, if, you, if you're relatively new to this, I'm not putting you on the spot, but maybe your impression is that, that Peter is one of the main characters of this New Testament. We just came out of musical season where I've been rehearsing lines for Annie for like two months, okay? I could, I could stand in for the part of Annie because I've rehearsed it with my daughter for, for 60 days in a row. They, they had this performance. It went fantastic. But my daughter had a role that was important. It was, it was kind of like one of these main characters. She had a lot of lines that had to support the main character of Annie. And so maybe your impression of Peter is that you know he's important to the story. And so you hold him in pretty high regard. Sometimes we'll hold Peter in a regard that it just seems unattainable to accomplish some of the things that he had done. And and in a lot of ways, it is. And yet there's so much that we can learn from who Peter was and what changed when he had been with Jesus. See, when we look at the story in Acts chapter 3, Peter and John had came, uh, they were headed to the temple to pray. They came across a man who was lame couldn't walk, and the man was asking them for money. Peter says, I can do you better than money, and he heals him in the name of Jesus. The guy gets up and walks. Now, the temple court is is loaded with people, and this kind of stirs up a ruckus in the crowd. And people who have been familiar that this guy has, has been here and been paralyzed his entire life is now leaping about. And, and this This drives this audience around Peter. And Peter uses it as an opportunity. So we're Acts 2, Acts 3, Acts 4 to give the same sermon he just gave in Acts 2. He just gives the same sermon all over again. Like, how'd you do this? He goes, I healed him in the name of Jesus. This is Jesus who you crucified. He's Jesus who died for our sins. But the good news is he was resurrected last week on Easter Sunday. And because of that, you and I can be in right standing with the Father. And he preaches this, and crowds start to gather. And, and, and the scripture says this. It says in uh, Acts chapter, I'll just put it up there, I'll find it on the slide. It says, the priests and the, and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees uh, uh, up to Peter and John, I gotta read it here. The priests and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John and while they were speaking to the people, they were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching people, proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. So, verse three, they seized Peter and John because it was evening and they put them in jail until the next day. But many who heard the message believed. So the number of men who believed grew to about 5,000. Unpack all this for two seconds. 
Jesus dies on a Friday. He's resurrected on Sunday. 50 days later, uh, they've spent time with Jesus and you get to Pentecost and the first sermon is given. Peter gives this first sermon in the temple courts during Pentecost, a big crowd, and 3,000 men are recorded to give their life to Jesus. Now, it's just a way of documenting the numbers that it was men, but what this implies is more than likely their families also. Peter gives his second sermon here at this gathering of, of people on an impromptu day of the week where he just heals somebody. And 2,000 more are added to their number. Again, only accounting for the men. And so you have a church of 10,000, 12,000, 15,000. And the very movement that they tried to exterminate when they killed Christ is now on fire. And Peter is, is at the helm of it. Peter is the one proclaiming Jesus. Uh, they're, they're pushing Peter to celebrity status, and he keeps pushing people to Jesus. The Sadducees, which is a, a Jewish sect of people, they're so furious that this uprising is continuing that they arrest them, they keep them overnight, and, and, and they try them in the morning. They, they interview them in the morning to figure out what is going on with these guys. And there's a movement out and about. Finally, when the next morning comes, we get to verse 7. And the scripture says this. They had Peter and John brought before them, and they began to question them, by what power or what name did you do this? See, the Jewish ruling council was made up of civil leaders and teaching lawyers and priests, and they were questioning Peter and John. But if you've already pictured in your head Peter as this powerful church leader, then you've already got the, the image in your head wrong. Because Peter still looks like a fisherman. Peter still looks like an ordinary guy. You know what he doesn't look like? He doesn't look like the religious leaders of the day. He doesn't look like this, this ruling class. The Greek grammar here is structured in such a way that the term you, here in verse 7, they had Peter and John brought before them and, and they began to question them and they said, by what power or what name did you do this? It was a derogatory tone. Do you know that derogatory tone, uh, like when somebody says, like, what are you doing today? Or when somebody says, what are you doing? You know the difference in the tone? It's a derogatory way that they're talking to Peter because they're, they're uneducated ordinary men. They're, they're not qualified men. You see, if, if your image of Peter is, is Peter past Acts chapter 2, you're only picturing the guy as successful. You're only picturing the guy as an accomplished preacher where, where thousands are coming to know Christ because he keeps proclaiming Jesus. It's the most successful ministry, and the persecution just drives it throughout the known world. It's how Christianity was spread. And if you only know Peter like that, you're missing the full picture because this is the same Peter who rebuked Jesus in Matthew 16. I don't know if you remember the story. He, he comes from his highest of high points where he says, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus says, I'm going to die for you. I'm going to die for sinners. I, I'm going to die for this cause. And Peter says, not on my watch, Jesus. Not dying here. And Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. Like, if you're having a bad day, if your Savior hasn't said, get behind you, me, Satan, to you, like, you're doing better than Peter did. Like, this is Peter who was miraculously on this Mount of Transfiguration with Moses and Elijah and Jesus. And, and his first thought was to interrupt them and say, could I build you guys a house? Read your Bible. Could I build you a place to stay? And nobody even responds to him. It was such like a non-contributing thing to say. Like, it was just like, you ever put your foot in your mouth, and you're like, I never want to speak in front of people again. This is Peter's moment. This is Peter's, like, I, I just shouldn't talk anymore. Peter's the one who, was, who promised Jesus. He promised him. Jesus says, you're going to deny me three times. No way, Jesus. Never. Until a girl, like a high school age little girl, just asked him three times. I'm pretty sure you're one of those guys who's with him. And he cussed her out. He got all sorts of foul with her and, and denied he even knew Jesus. He lost his temper in the garden and cut off a guard's ear. He gets ratted out by John on that one. He, he was the one who immediately went back to fishing after the crucifixion. 
Peter wasn't as bad as Judas, but it seems like there could have been somebody more qualified to lead the church. Do you ever feel unqualified? Do you ever get around other people that you think know God better than you? And rather than it entice you into more, you just feel like, I don't know if I'm ever going to get this the way that they do. Peter did. I sure do. I think one of the weirdest things about ministry is that more people, the longer I do this, associate me with this than with what I see when I look in the mirror. Because I'm way more comfortable in a Carhartt hoodie and muck boots. Like, this is way out of my comfort zone. Because when I look at myself, there's a, there's a piece that feels unqualified. It, it, each of us do this. We get d- defined by our, our surroundings. It's all we've ever known. And while we might feel successful and accomplished in one arena, to step out of that and let God use us or change us into something more feels impossible. I just was hanging out with my friend Rob this week. We recorded a podcast. It'll, it'll be fantastic in about two weeks you got to look forward to this one. And he said, I feel comfortable regardless of what firehouse I walk into. Because they're my people. This is what I've known. I've been a fireman my whole life. I've been an EMT my whole life. I'm always comfortable around that. My nursing friends. When you you share something in common, that when you get around other medical-minded people and farmers, oh my goodness. Get around a coffee table with farmers and listen to them talk about things you have no idea what they're saying. Numbers of things and markets and shorting and... I don't even know. I just nod and pretend I do, and I I dress like them once in a while. But you feel comfortable when you're around the people that you've been with. And, And while that's a wonderful thing, and while you should feel a sense of belonging, while you should feel like a sense of, uh, these are my people, and this is what I've, I've been trained to go into, and this is what I've developed my skill set in. If you're limited by a label of you before Christ, You've missed the potential of what God wants to do in you and through you. And sometimes we say that so often that you sell yourself short that we genuinely mean that we think each of you are called into ministry. You were sent by him. It's not an accomplished few of us. You're all parts of a body and you're all a valued part of the body. And and we get comfortable by our surroundings. And in those comfortable places, we limit ourselves to what our potential is in the kingdom. There's just a couple things that make us you, in quotes. You were created in God's image. And you and I fell short of that image when sin entered the picture. But you and I have a story that changes when we've been with Jesus. It changes the narrative. It changed Peter. Peter's response. So remember like where we've been. Like verse 7 was like uh, that they bring him before by what authority, what power are, are you doing this derogatory? And Peter goes off with another sermon. I mean this in the best way. And then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, this is a key part to the text, said to them, rulers and elders of the people, if we're being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it's by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. He just calls him to the carpet. Jesus, that you crucified and that God raised from the dead. It's the same sermon you arrested me for. And then he goes in and he quotes scripture that they would have known and had written on their heart. He said, Jesus is, and he quotes, the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Friends, this is the part that you and I believe we could never do. I could could believe in Jesus. I could worship Jesus. I could be part of a small group maybe. I'm doing my red letter challenge. I'm going to do a devotional every day. You're growing. Doesn't this feel like the impossible part though? To defend your faith? Do you know what felt impossible for Peter like 60 days before this? When he tried to quit? 
when he had to get reinstated on a beach over breakfast with Jesus? He felt unqualified. This is the part that I always feel like I could never do. Look at what changed in Peter. You've got to ask what changed. Verse 13, when they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men. That is like the most encouraging two lines in Scripture to me. They were astonished and took note that these men had been with Jesus. If there's nothing that you walk away with today except for this, the defining trait of Peter that qualified him is that he had been with Jesus. And if you want to see healing, if you want to see change, if you want to see a capacity to do things for the kingdom, it is in your proximity to Jesus that you will find that. It's the only place where this healing can take place. I don't know about you. I'd love for somebody to say he's not that smart, but he's been with Jesus. I don't think there's a higher compliment that could be given. And it lingers this question, like, who are you with? Because the fear is that most of you are trying to do this alone. Like, and I will clean up my act, I will get it together, and then when I get around my church friends, they will see it. And they'll think that I'm one of them. Why? Because I've behaviorally modified myself to look like them. Who are you with? Do you ever feel like you're doing this alone? Hey, dads. Do you ever feel that weight when you wake up in the middle of the night of providership? And if anybody ever knew the insecurities or the fears that were going on in your head, you would be so embarrassed because you would appear weak. And so you just, you feel that, like I have to do it on my own. I have to provide, I have to sustain, I have to lead, I have to not fail again. And you just look forward to a time of day when you can check out and get away from it all. Moms, you just come off of spring break. Everybody, every mom feels successful after spring break. Or after like five days with your kids where you're like, when does school start? Look to summer school options. Why is that? It's like the greatest privilege in the world. You know, it's like the greatest privilege in the world to get to parent these babies. And yet, and yet they exhaust us and it gets to the most insecure of places. And you're like, I don't know if I can do this or if I'm doing it right at all. And there's a real potential that you're doing it alone. If that's the way that you feel about it. Singles, single people, you ever feel lonely or unlikable or unapproachable? Question, uh, retired folks, you ever feel like there's no place for you left anymore? Like life's passed you by? I think some of you carry real damage by people who should have loved you, protected you, or that you should have been protected from. And if that label, or if someone tells you that that label of your hurt experience is, is all that will ever define you, then you're getting advice from somebody who hasn't been with Jesus. If you operate in a world that has labeled you by your brokenness by your sin then you just haven't been with Jesus yet and something's got to change there's a pivot point you see the thing that we're asking you to do that we always ask you to do it's not rare for red letter challenge but it's it's just so important is that you would commit the next five weeks to being here and being a part of the church and that you would commit to a life group that you would commit to doing life with people who are spirit-filled so that you aren't doing this on your own. I don't know what you have to walk back into on Monday morning, but I know that when you're here, you're going to experience people who are crying out to the same God as you are. And so you can be brand new at this. You can, you can be day one intrigued by Jesus. I know nothing. I need you to give me a Bible and I can't afford a red letter challenge book. We will hook you up. Just come and find me afterwards. You can be on day 40. Uh, you could be on year 40. And regardless of where you're at, you need the body of Christ and you need a group of people around you to do life with. You need this. You know how the story ends with Peter and John here? They go back, uh, they get released, they get told, don't preach anymore about Jesus. They say no, they get released, they go back and, and they go back and they warn everybody, hey, we gotta keep a lower profile. No, they don't do that. Instead, they go back and they begin to pray for more boldness that they would get back out there and do it again. 
Their prayer looked like this, verse 29. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God boldly. I don't know what settings you're going to walk into that are going to be filled with the Holy Spirit, but I know that you're going to find him here. I know that you're going to find him in my life group and life groups like mine. I heard a, a story just a couple of weeks ago. Pat Ugolini, I'll try to make this quick, over at our Seneca campus, his grandmother passed away a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it, it, she had just progressed and gotten worse, and they made the decision to move her home for hospice. And so Jackie, Pat's mom, went to ride in the ambulance for that medical transport from the hospital back to her home. When Jackie got in the ambulance, she was surprised to hear worship music playing. She just bowed her head next to her mom, who was, you know, near the end, and was just praying and just, and was shocked to hear worship music playing. When she announced herself to the, the two drivers, to the guys up front, she said, Could, would you mind turning the music up a little bit? They said, of course. And they just filled an ambulance with worship. Somehow or another, Jackie brought up, I, I go to church in Seneca, where we're bringing my mom home to pass away, and my son's the pastor there. And Carlos, the guy playing acoustic, turned around and said, I go to the village in Manuka. I want you to experience moments that can only be credited to God, providing a comfort in a community of people who are spirit-filled in our most painful of circumstances. I want you to, to be with people who have been with Jesus. And I can't offer that to you if you keep trying to do it on your own. I want to have a church full of Carlos stories. A guy who plays worship music on the job and just lets the chips fall where they may. I want to have a church full of Jackies that in their time of need, they're surrounded by people that they didn't even know they went to church with, loving them and caring for them. There's a link tree. It's really simple if you scan it on your phone. It'll give you a list of things that you can connect to here, but one of them is to sign up for a life group. We've got life groups happening just about every night of the week, but I know that there's in particular a bunch of new ones on Tuesday. And you could just commit to five weeks of Tuesday nights for an hour. I'm leading one of them. I promise we'll get out of there in an hour. We'll hold each other to it. But you could sign up for it today. I know that God's spirit's going to be there. I know you're going to connect with people who need it. And then personally, here's the second thing we need you to do. Commit to being with Jesus. I know that this is the most important thing. I just think you need the church to walk with you as you do it. But what would it look like if you spent the week in scripture? If you spent the week in prayer? If you learned about just setting some time aside in solitude? Or worship? That you would worship in your, in your free time? That you would start your day with worship? Same link, you can go ahead and click it. The same link tree it has links to our favorite worship playlists. There's one for the Red Letter Challenge that you can watch on YouTube. There's one if you prefer Apple Music. I think that one's from Pat. There's one if you use Spotify. I think that one's from Mike in Cool City. It's just a worship playlist. If you struggle with the radio, you know, and you get maybe burned out sometimes on, on the radio, you could, you could listen to one of the playlists of one of these guys. It'd be fantastic. Church, our being with Jesus is more important than our not being anywhere else. If you've never started being with Jesus, if you've never started a relationship with him, man, I would invite you to start that today. To just come before him humbly and say, God, I've tried to do this without you, and now I want to do it with you. God, I'm a broken man or broken woman, and I, I need you as a savior. That we could walk with you in that and publicly professing and going public and in display of that faith and baptism and living this Christian life together. That we would walk in this. That you would do this life with Jesus. Because our being with Jesus is more important than our not being with anyone else. We're going to be a church who spends time with Jesus. 
We're going to be a church that spends time in his word, worshiping his name, and we invite you to be a part of that so that we can also be a church that when we leave these walls, we can do great things for the kingdom. Let's pray. God, we love you. Father, we're reminded of how much you love us. We're so humbled, God, by the way that you've pursued us. We're so humbled by the the way that you've blessed us. We're so humbled by a, a space that we can gather here and online and in Seneca and in Cool City. But in our hearts, we hunger for more. We hunger for more of you. We hunger for more of your spirit. So I just pray that your spirit would pour out on our church. I pray that you would equip people at a pace that we didn't even think was possible. How long did it take Peter, Lord? Two years of of walking with you, three years of of walking with you, and then 60 days, and, and you put him in charge. God, would you equip us that way? Would you equip us in a way that we went out and boldly proclaimed who you were, that we, that we just grew up in our faith? We ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I love that at the end of that scripture that, that Nick shared, that they prayed for boldness. In this last song we're going to sing together, you can feel free to stand. Um, I love the people who just know, let's go, (laughs) let's stand and worship. Um, But the spirit came and that's what this song is. It's a prayer. It's, it's asking the spirit of God to just rest on us, to rest in this place. And and we'll go ahead and sing that now as we um, just meditate on this truth that we heard.
Welcome back. I'm so glad you came back with us. Uh, Nick had a great message. I love that he talked about the ordinary people, the ordinary people in the Bible that became extraordinary, because I think that's just all of us in real life. Um, I want to go back to one thing he talked about in Scripture, Acts 4, 13. He was talking about how Peter was the most unqualified, yet Jesus chose him to be such a strong messenger of his word. Um, and in this scripture it says, they realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men. They were astonished and they took note that, this, that these men had been with Jesus. They had walked with Jesus. And for us to walk with Jesus is being in his word and taking time to spend with him. And um, this is a great opportunity we as a church are doing with the Red Letter Challenge. Um, I know you guys are out there in the online community. If you're not here in the area, one of two things. You can find this online, Red Letter Challenge book, right here. You can see it. Find it online, I believe, on Amazon. If not, text us. Connect with us. We will get a book into your hands. Um, Patrick is on the other line, and we'll make sure we get you a book. This is a great starting point. If you're not already walking with Jesus and being with him, this is a great starting point to do that. Um, at this time, perfectly, we're going to walk with Jesus by doing communion. We're going we're gonna to spend some time with him with that. I'm going to reference now in um, the New Testament, 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 25. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this. Whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread, drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Communion is about a time of remembering how Jesus died on his cross and rose again so you and I, ordinary people, can walk freely in his grace. Take some elements wherever you are, crackers, juice, and take this time to remember how you and I can walk with him in his grace and mercy. Nick said at the end something pretty impactful. He said, our being with Jesus is more important than our not being anywhere else. So how I talked about the beginning of um, all of this, how in the survey of like you got 17 hours in the day, 16 hours a day, it is more important for us to spend a few moments with him than not being anywhere else. It will change your life forever. I promise you, I promise you. Thank you for being with us. I'm going to pray out over us for the week. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to listen to your word and see how Peter, such an ordinary, unschooled man, was gifted by Jesus to walk and proclaim his word. It's something that you can do for all of us. We are, un, we are ordinary people, and you give us the opportunity every day to speak boldly of your word. I pray over all those that are here with us today that they go out to, into the week, that they can spend time with you and start putting that into their day, that they can surround their self with others that are spending time with you, and that we can take this opportunity to have our lives changed, all for the better through you. All this in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thanks so much for joining us. We can't wait to see you back here next week. Take care. Thank you.